Hey guys! So as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be telling the story of my first and only gay club experience. But before we do, might I just add, my hair is a beautiful silvery platinum colour. Anyway, let's do this. So it all started way back last December, when me and Katie went on our romantic couple getaway to Melbourne. Although we got drunk every night of the long weekend, we decided that Saturday night we were going to properly go out to town. At first we were planning on going to a big Melbourne club, for a reason I've forgotten, we decided to hit up the gay club Poof Doof. If you don't know, Katie is a coincidental fag hag, so she was super excited to be around her future GBFs, and I think she was more comfortable than what I was. I say coincidental because, by coincidence, all three of her closest guy friends have come out and 9 out of 10 guys she meets somehow are gay. I don't know how she does it, but besides the point. So me and Katie got dropped off by our Uber, out front of Poof Doof, and in we go. Straight away walking in, it's just a massive sausage fest. I mean, obviously, there's shirtless guys, there's guys wearing mesh, there's bearded drag queens, the whole lot. After grabbing a drink and sussing the venue out, like, it was a bit overwhelming. I've never been around that many gay people before, but not only gay people, like, up front, really confident gay people. I mean, I was getting the looks up and down, the straw bite by staring into your eyes. I had my bum pinched, my chest stroked, and sometimes it would happen so fast I wouldn't even know who or where it was coming from. So at this point, Katie and I needed the toilet, so off we went. And when I got to the guys' toilets, it was so full, so I was just gonna wait outside, but then Katie was like, no, come into the girls' toilets. And at that moment, I realized that there's no such thing as guys and girls' toilets, because Katie was literally the only girl in the girls' toilets. So I finished up and waited outside of the toilets for her, and while I'm waiting there, I noticed this guy. Let's call him Leslie. So he's standing across from me, waiting for his friends as well, giving me this vibe. So uncomfortable me just looks at my phone, looks around the venue, basically avoiding eye contact. But at this point, I could feel him staring into my soul, literally eye raping me. <laughs> but I was pretending like I couldn't notice. Anyway, his friends come out from the toilets, and as he walks past from me, he pinches my shirt on my chest and goes, you should smile more often. And I'm like, ha oh yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh. And he's like dead serious, lingering into my eyes as he walks off, like... Then to myself, I'm like, um, what the fuck? So when Katie came out of the toilets, I filled her in with what happened with me and Leslie, and she just laughed. So off we go, up to the bar, and I'm leaning on the bar, watching everything behind me from, like, this mirror that was across the back of the bar, and Katie's behind me, just grooving to the music. Anyway, waiting for the bartender, I hear Katie behind me, befriending someone. So I look in the mirror, and it's Leslie. Little does Katie know that it's Leslie, he asks, who'd you come with? And she goes, my best friend Kyle, and turns around, and grabs me. So because of me and Leslie's previous encounter at the toilets, I put on this fake smile and I'm like, oh hey, it's you. And he goes, oh, you're here with the guy that doesn't smile. <sighs> And it was funny because Katie's face just changes as she realizes that that was the guy I told her about outside the bathroom. And she goes, what? No, he's always smiling when he's with me. I don't know what you're talking about. He has a beautiful smile. Okay, clearly Leslie knew that Katie was here with me and I was here with Katie. So anyway, getting awkwardly stuck in this conversation, he ends up introducing us to two of his other friends and then ends up getting them to buy us a drink. And from what I've seen about this guy already, I can tell that he's the type of guy that would just like pay out to any Thing that I say and bingo I was right so he asked me what I want to drink and I'm like what's got orange juice and he goes oh cute <sighs> Yep, okay, whatever. So we get awkwardly talking, because here's the thing with me. I'm too nice to, to tell people that I'm not interested or to just walk away. So I act really friendly and for... <clears throat> Beg my pardon. Emphasis on friend. Like, I'm not giving you any vibes, I'm not giving you any body language, I'm not giving you any cheeky talk, and everything cheeky you say to me, I'm laughing off as a joke. So, I don't really know why he kept trying, but... So he ends up asking me the questions like, what do you do for a job? What are your hobbies? Pays me out for everything that I say, like it's cute, but really it just makes me less attracted to him than what I somehow already was. And by the way, along the way of this conversation, like he's being all like cutesy, bitchy, whatever to me, but then he's also like stroking my arm and pinching my butt. <sighs> So nice me inside is internally screaming and trying to figure out a nice escape plan. But on the outside, I'm like, grooving with my drink in my hand. So he ends up asking me if I have any tattoos. And like I quote and say to everyone, a wise woman, Kim Kardashian, once told me that you don't put a bumper sticker in a Bentley. And you know what he says? Mm, are you a Bentley though? Like, okay. You tell me, Mr. Mature and I'm successful. Like compared to you, I'm a Bentley. You wouldn't be trying this hard for anything less than a Bentley. Oh, honestly, he was 
just like so annoying but my friendly nice me will just be the death of me honestly it'll be the death of me and so the other two friends of Leslie are trying to like dance with Katie and distract her and take her away from me so that it's just alone time with me and Leslie just what I want so as they're like slowly grooving with Katie onto the dance floor I am following <laughs> and so is Leslie so we're dancing on this little stage thing as a group and he's like trying to isolate me and take me away from them and he leans in to try and kiss me and I'm just like me and Katie are gonna go get a drink so he ended up successfully getting a drink and escaping and going to a different spot on the dance floor to dance and so we're just dancing and the next minute we get pulled up onto the little stage thing by guess who fucking Leslie and his friends fuck my life and then so we're dancing and like we isolated ourselves from Leslie and his friends and then me and Katie meet this other guy let's call him dick and as I think that me and Katie have successfully escaped Leslie guess who's lingering right next to our group right next to the guy I'm dancing with staring right at me into my soul <sighs> Leslie so at this point I grab the guy that I'm dancing with next to me Katie grabs dick and we go off somewhere else and I'm like oh my god that is the guy that I was telling you about so whatever we're just dancing there and then Katie tells me that she got told by Leslie's friends that he was pissed off that I had left him I'm not your boyfriend I don't know you who are you leave me alone <laughs> so fast forward an hour later me and this guy are dancing and then Katie gets a bit upset because one she was pretty drunk and two I think she was feeling a bit left out because all the guys in the club were gay <laughs> she probably wanted to dance with someone who wasn't just trying to befriend her to steal her heels <laughs> so from what Katie tells me Dick asks her what's wrong and then she tells him and then he goes oh well technically I'm bi I'm like 80% gay so he ends up kissing her so she's like oh, whatever you know drunk in the moment it's fun and then as time goes on he starts to get a little bit rapey so he's like clearly wanting more like asking her to go somewhere quiet and she's like uh, okay, this isn't fun. <laughs> and now the tables have turned. I'm having fun and she's trying to escape Dick. So I can't tell you the details like I told you with Leslie. Long story short, no matter what she did to try and escape, he was not taking the hints. Like, he was clingy. And both of us were just kind of a bit too drunk to deal with it. So, adios, poof doof. We have decided that that is enough for us. So we end up getting back to our hotel at about 6.30 a.m. and the sun's rising. And we get inside and we just crash on bed. And then like a casual 10 seconds later, I can't remember who said it, but when I get some hash browns from McDonald's and well whoever said it we both agreed <laughs> so up we got and walked down to McDonald's and we got four McMuffins and nine hash browns and they were fucking amazing there you have it, my first gay club experience. I don't know how keen I am on it because it was a little bit too much for me. Um, but looking back, it was actually pretty fun. Uh, and no doubt me and Katie will probably go to a gay club in Sydney later on in the year. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, this guy was also 29. Like, age isn't a huge thing for me, but sorry, not the daddy I'm looking for. <laughs> so yeah, I think lesson learned, me and Caitlin need to suck it up and be a little bit more honest because some people don't take hints. Or maybe we need a hint harder. I don't know, we just need to stop being soft sooks. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I'm gonna try and post as often as I can. I'm aiming for like a week, a week and a half. But if it's a little bit longer, I do have two jobs and I work most days, if not every day of the week. So it does get a little bit difficult sometimes. Other than that, I'm gonna love you and leave you. See you next time. It's Britney, bitch. <laughs>